Like if I told you right now, I have a dollar for sale, would you pay me more than a dollar for my dollar? You shouldn't, but some of you will. I hear this conversation a lot that's happening. It's like, Chris, I don't know how to charge more. I can't charge more because why? Because there's too much competition. You guys feel that? Like, well, if I don't charge less, then someone else down the street will do it. And that's a problem because when when you feel like and act like you're a commodity, you compete on price and it's a race to the bottom. Anybody feel that way right now? Especially if you're in a developing country, you feel that a lot more, right? You're like, oh, dude, no one here wants to pay for what it's worth. And you're a very privileged American to say you can charge whatever you want but I believe that. So I wanna examine that and I wanna compare and contrast that to this idea of being a differentiated business, one for which there's no competition for. Anybody here feel like they have a business of one, meaning there's only one of one, one of you? So this is the difference between being a, um, like a designer versus the designer or the only, there's a big difference there. If you're one of one and you're highly differentiated, radically different according to Marty Neumeyer, then you command a price premium. Who here would like to charge a premium? Okay, now in every marketplace, there are brands that are commodities and brands that command a price premium because they're highly differentiated. Yesterday we talked about the psychological effects because you feel like you're part of a community, a tribe. They empower you, they feel you, they see you, they understand you, and therefore you pay a little bit more. Or in some cases, a lot more. We talked about Maslow's hierarchy of needs and self-actualization and gaining social status. In his book, Implementing Value Pricing, Ronald J. Baker, Ron Baker talks about a lack of imagination. There's no such thing as a commodity. If you believe him and he's a super bright guy I believe him there's no such thing as a commodity there's just lack of imagination so if you're in a position where you're not able to command the kind of money that you want to get the respect that you desire and the control that you need to be able to do your job it's probably because you're a commodity and I'm gonna say you lack imagination he points out in the book at the grocery store you can buy a head of lettuce I looked it up it's buck 69 lettuce commodity right I'm not gonna necessarily pay for more for the same head of lettuce I'll just buy the cheap one if they're both fresh and they both look good I'm gonna buy that so he's like look at a head of lettuce Lettuce, and with some imagination, we can charge a lot more for the head of lettuce. So if we were to take that head of lettuce and we were to hand leaf it and pre-wash it three times and we put it in a bag, that lettuce now is significantly more. And how many bags of lettuce could you make from one head of lettuce? Two, maybe three? So has anybody bought like pre-wash hand leaf lettuce or cabbage or how much more is it? It's like three bucks? Four, four or five bucks, okay. Let's say it's like four bucks, we do not know. And so I imagine, cause there's not a lot in there from one thing, you could probably get two, you could probably get three, okay? And then how many of you guys are so busy that, yeah, yeah, I can buy that, but I want some more convenience because this is what you're buying now. You want to buy one of those like Wolfgang Puck Express Caesar salad deals. Okay, you're shaking your head. Some of you are nodding because you've done it. So now we'll put in a piece of plastic, same lettuce. We'll throw in some croutons, right? And a little package of dressing. Whoa, that costs. At least it's Wolfgang Puck, guys. He don't go for nobody. Let's say it's eleven ninety nine. I don't know. My wife shops at Gelson, so everything's more than it needs to be. Same amount of lettuce, I think. Maybe half of the lettuce in a bag. So they've taken half of it and they put it in there, and now they sell it for a lot more. You see the difference that's already happened here. What are they applying? A little branding, a lot of imagination. Is that something that you can do? But I know that you guys are tough customers because you're creatives and you just don't like to change. Even though you talk about everybody should stretch out of the comfort zone, when it comes to yourself, it's better to dish out the medicine than to eat it, right? So in his book, Implementing Value Pricing, Ron says you can actually even charge more for money. How's that even possible? Like if I told you right now, I have a dollar for sale, would you pay me more than a dollar for my dollar? You shouldn't, but some of you will, because you're like, hey, it's a special dollar. If you sign it, if you do something, maybe it's worth more, right? That's why we buy autographed things. Can somebody just do me a favor? Look on your phone, whoever's got a stock app, look up the price of Disney right now. It's uh, $98.99. $98.99, okay. And that's Disney, D-I-S, right? One share of Disney stock, $98.99. Paris is like $99 right now. Would you buy this for 100, 110? What is this worth? No, it's worth $98.99. If you pay 99, you paid a cent more. And why would you do that, right? But you, did you know this? There's a company that buys, buys blue chip or sells blue chip stock and they sell one issue of stock and then they frame it. And depending on the frame that you buy, this one stock costs more and they sell it for 150 bucks. And you're like, what? All they did was put in a frame and they, they printed out a representation of the stock and what grandparents do is they give this to their grandchildren. It's only worth $98, but they can sell it, say for $150. So are you convinced yet that there's no such thing as a commodity? If we can literally take a commodity, a currency, and charge more for it, inject a little bit of imagination, we are now differentiated. Kid gets the gift. It's the gift that keeps giving because in 10, 20, 30 years, that will not be worth $100. Hopefully it'll be worth a lot more than that. I just want you to take a moment and just look at your
your own life and your career and think about it. If you're stuck, is it because you're really stuck or you lack imagination? It's a hard truth. Like I only came to Adobe Max with two things, truths and candy. And I'm all out of candy. I'm sorry to say, I only have truths for you at this point. So go back and think about what it is that you're doing and apply some imagination to it. Now, what happened here? How did this company come upon this magical solution to take something that's a commodity and figure out a way to sell it for a lot more than what it's worth? What do they do? Now, if you're paying attention to Peter Drucker, he says a business has one valid purpose, which is to create a customer. So they took this and they're like, who would ever buy this? They found a customer, grandparents, people who want to give gifts that keep on giving. Instead of giving a toy, they give something that could grow in value. Some parents or grandparents give seeds, they grow for different reasons. Some of them give stock certificates and they only buy blue chip companies because you don't want that gift to go down in value. Makes sense, right? You have to create a customer. So think about that. When you go home tonight, when you're lying in bed thinking about this conversation, once you think back about your lack of imagination, why you accept that you're a commodity right now and you volunteer for it so that the market can look at you like a head of lettuce, that you're no different than another head of lettuce. Oh, you web developer? There's 10 more. You're undifferentiated. Undifferentiated companies die because there's a race to the bottom and there's a lot of you at the bottom. Let's get our way out, okay?